When Apple announced iOS 14, there were lots of new and exciting features that they talked about at WWDC. And we've gone over a lot of those main features in previous videos, so be sure to click the card in the upper right corner to check those videos out. But in this video, we're gonna go over some of the best new features that you should know for iOS 14. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. First up is picture in picture inside of FaceTime, and it's definitely something we have all wanted, and it's now finally here. You all know that if you try to leave FaceTime while on a call and go to another app, it will actually pause that video feed and the person on the other end won't be able to see you. But in iOS 14, we finally get a true picture in picture while on a call and it will no longer pause the video feed and you're free to multitask while FaceTiming around with family members and friends. This is even more important to those who use FaceTime while on a work call and need to reference other documents in other apps. Speaking of calls, there's nothing worse than your screen being taken over by an incoming phone call. Maybe you're just about to hit send on an important text or email, or maybe you're about to break your high score in a game and then boom, a FaceTime call or a phone call comes in ruining everything. In iOS 14, that's no longer going to be the case. Phone calls now come in just as a normal notification from the top, and you can decide to either reject or accept without losing out on what you've been doing before. The new home screen features that were announced were great, but perhaps my favorite feature, and maybe for those of you who are like me, who don't like having all of your apps scattered throughout a ton of different pages, is the new app library. For me, I like one home screen with my apps that I use on a regular basis, and then to access the rest of the apps, I just swipe from right to left to access the new app library. All of your apps are put into different category folders like Siri suggestions, recently added applications, social, productivity, etc. Your most used apps are located at the top level, but to find the rest of your apps, you'll need to just tap the subfolder that's nested within. Personally, if it's not at the top level, I just swipe down to see the list view. It makes it a lot easier to find the app that I'm looking for. Apple has finally allowed users to set third-party applications as defaults for browsers and mail applications in iOS 14, but unfortunately, that feature is not yet available in the beta that I'm currently running, which is beta 2, but hopefully Apple will have this available in the fall during its official release. Apple made search better in iOS 14, and now when you type in a search term, you can scroll down to the search in apps section and tap on an app automatically to launch a search in that specific application. You can search in notes, mail, files, messages, the app store, and more. App search was technically in iOS 13, but this feature in iOS 14 has expanded and is much more organized. Speaking of searching for things, side scrolling through a list of emojis is absolutely terrible, but thankfully inside of iOS 14, you can now just search for whatever emoji you might be looking for, saving me what seems like all eternity scrolling to find that specific emoji. Privacy was again on the forefront of a lot of what Apple was trying to do with iOS 14, and one feature that stuck out to us is the ability to share approximate locations instead of precise locations in specific apps. It's pretty easy to do, just head into location settings and turn off precise location. This next feature is technically an accessibility feature, but it is pretty cool. Back tap allows users to double or triple tap the back of their phones to carry out a specific function or task. So right now I have a double tap set up to take a screenshot and triple tap will take me home. It works really well, but it's also very sensitive, and I find that sometimes it just randomly happens without me meaning to do it. But there are tons of actions to choose from, and it could be really useful to a lot of people out there. Inside of the camera app, there are a few new features in iOS 14, but one that I find specifically useful is if you tap the arrow icon at the top, you'll see a new icon with a plus minus symbol at the bottom. This stands for exposure, which means you can now adjust the exposure and actually lock that exposure setting so that it won't automatically adjust. This could be very useful for videos when sometimes the exposure changes around you randomly and you really need things to not be over or underexposed and kind of just locked at one specific exposure setting. For those who have an iPhone 10s or 10R, a feature that was primarily for the new iPhone 11 has made its way down to older devices and that's quick take video. To do this, simply press and hold on the shutter button when in photo mode, and you'll just start recording video immediately. 
You can then slide the shutter button to the right to lock video recording in, which will allow users to take their fingers off of the screen. Control Center now offers users the ability to control HomeKit devices right from Control Center. If you head to Settings, Control Center, and then toggle on Show Home Controls, you'll now have access to some of your HomeKit favorites, which if you long press on HomeKit favorites, it'll bring up a bunch of your favorite uh, HomeKit toggles, maybe some lights that you might have scattered throughout Control Center or your HomePod, but just easier access to those specific HomeKit functions in your Control Center. I'm sure you've all heard about widgets on the home screen as Apple talked about it a lot at WWDC, and it's one of the bigger features to headline iOS 14. Apple also introduced a smart stack widget that changes automatically throughout the day to reflect your usage history. But did you know that you can create your own smart widget stack yourself? Just drag and drop widgets on top of each other and you'll have your own widget stack. And if you wanna make that widget stack smart, just long press on the widget itself, select edit stack, and then toggle on smart rotate. Finally, Apple Music got a pretty big redesign with the navigation bar, getting a few new icons and options, and everything is just really nicely designed and more streamlined. And there are different options to choose from at the bottom. And also, there's a new now playing screen, which looks really, really cool with the album artwork kind of blending in to the background color and offering a gradient shift as the song plays, it'll move around. It just looks really, really cool. There's also one last little feature that Apple has added to Apple Music and it's in the up next queue, which is autoplay. Simply tap the playing next icon or up next icon in the bottom right corner. And then you'll see three icons, shuffle, repeat, and the new autoplay icon, which looks like the infinity symbol. Turning that on will allow Apple Music to just continue playing music once your queue has stopped based off of the music that you might like in your history. A feature that I love on Spotify now making its way to Apple Music. And that's it. Here are features that we think you should know that are some of the best ones to make its way into iOS 14. Of course, would love to know what your favorite features are, what you're excited about, and if you're using the beta, the public beta, whatever, just go ahead and let us know in the comment section down below how you're enjoying iOS 14. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.